Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The beginning of the good news about Jesus Christ, God's Son, happened just as it was written about in the prophecy of Isaiah. Look, I am sending my messenger before you. He will prepare your way. A voice shouting in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the Baptist was in the wilderness calling for people to be baptized to show that they were changing their hearts and lives and wanted God to forgive their sins. Everyone in Judea and all the people of Jerusalem went out to the Jordan River and were being baptized by John as they confessed their sins. John wore clothes made of camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He ate locusts and wild honey. He announced, one stronger than I am is coming after me, not even worthy to bend over and loosen the strap of his sandals. I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. 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 As we enter the second and third Sundays in Advent, we always encounter John, John the Baptist. And one of the, the ways that he is known for, even in his icons, is sort of a wild man. You know, his hair is wild, he's wearing weird clothes, and, and he's known for very loud, angry preaching. That's what we hear when we listen to Matthew and Luke, but you don't hear it from Mark. I believe what you hear from Mark is that other part of the job that the prophets have. And that's not to necessarily get people to just repent, but to help people prepare, to help people get ready to somehow embrace God in their lives in, in a new way. When John arrives on the scene at this particular moment, uh, it's a tough time. Uh, Rome is there, the people are poor, uh, they don't know what's going to happen next in terms of their lives. <clears throat> John comes and says, what you need to do is you need to think about how you might reflect differently on your life and how you might somehow get ready to have God come into your life. And if God were to come into your lives, what would you hope to have happen? I think it's really nice that you have hope out front uh, because that really becomes one of the key moments of what happens in our lives. What John is trying to do and say in this is we hear this is the beginning of the good news. The beginning of the good news can happen for us, and I suspect happen for each one of us, when a person or persons introduced us to a new way to look at life, a new way to see and understand how God breaks into our world. <clears throat> we live now in a time of, of turmoil, a time of, of sickness, a time of anger, and people often sort of throw up their hands and say, you know, what, what can we possibly do? As a matter of fact, one of the great problems that we deal with is the, the, the concern of being cynical, of somehow thinking, you know, life's just so bad, you know, what are we, where are we going to go? Because of that, let me tell you about a comic strip. Uh, my favorite comic strip, because it is very cynical, is Pearls Before Swine. And in Pearls Before Swine, you have two main creatures. One is a pig who is sweet and innocent and naive. And one is a rat who is intelligent and cynical. And in this particular comic strip, we see the pig carrying a couple of balloons, dancing down the street, and rat says to the, to, to the pig, how can you be happy with all that's going on in the world? And Pig says, oh, I've never hoped for anything more. It's the hope that'll kill you. 
And that is such a cynical way to approach life. But often the way that many people do. What I believe John is encouraging us to do and to think about is a different way to begin to hope and to understand that life can be different, that life can be full, that dreams, it, it's okay to dream, and dreams can indeed come true. Today is the, the 6th of December, and because of that, it is a day that reminds us of, in this day and time, how even now, for at least millions and millions of people, particularly young people, dreams can come true. The dream is that a man in a red suit will arrive with a bag on his back, and in that bag are all my hopes and dreams for what I want to have happen. For those children, it is a wondrous, magical time. And they believe truly that these wondrous things can happen. That beyond all hope, we're going to be able to receive things that we'd like, and even more. And we as, as people responsible for these children spend a lot of our time making sure that those dreams might happen. That that environment that those decorations, that that food, that all the ex expectation is there. Because what happens in December, we call it Advent, but the world calls it December, is that we look forward with anticipation, with excitement, with energy, to somehow this event happening in our lives. What we are called to do spiritually is the same sort of thing to look forward to God breaking through into our lives and into our world. The tragedy is, if our cynicism is so great, we often miss those wondrous moments in which God does break into our lives. What we dream for, what I dream of, is a world that doesn't have hunger and homelessness. I dream of a, of a world in which education is available and good for all people. I dream of a world in which the climate and creation is respected and cared for. I dream of a world in which even if you think differently and have different views, you can be respected and listened to and heard. When those moments do happen, and they do, God is there. When somehow what happens is, is the, the giving garden down here can be created all through the summer. God is here in special kind of ways, along with the butterflies. What happens is when people come and find food and a smile and a welcome, God is there. What I believe we all need to do, and I believe John was trying to say that, is we need to open our hearts and minds to dream to hope, to believe that truly God is not only coming, but in our lives now, and to open ourselves to that, and to celebrate it. Christmas becomes the moment we celebrate God's presence. May we find a way in the midst of our lives to be able to, to embrace the coming of God by all that we might do to somehow make our world, the lives of others that are dear to us, and other people, fuller, more complete, by the love and the care and the respect that we might offer. When that happens, God comes.